what are ocular migraines? Well, as a migraine sufferer and an ophthalmologist, we're gonna dive deep into this topic. Keep watching. I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, my doctor mom life here in Hawaii, and a little bit of eye makeup health as well. So if any of that interests you, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button so you get all of this awesome video content right when it comes out. All right, so I mentioned before, I am a migraine sufferer. I have suffered from migraines for over 20 years now. And so this is something that I'm personally invested in. And I just understand and I can empathize when my patients come into the office, especially with ocular migraines. So what is an ocular migraine exactly? When people use the word ocular migraine, it actually can refer to one of three different types of migraines, a migraine with an aura, a retinal migraine, and an ophthalmic migraine. So what's an aura? An aura typically is something that a person will see, and it's a very discreet event. And it can start very small and then grow to be bigger. Typically, it doesn't last more than an hour. And only about one third of migraine sufferers have an aura. So I've actually really never had an aura at all. So I'm kind of in the majority. But if you have an aura, that might be what's called an ocular migraine, a migraine with an aura. And so migraine auras are typically visual and they have a lot of symptoms that include your visual system. And an aura that actually affects your vision is pretty common. The good thing is that they are temporary and like I mentioned, they do not last longer than 60 minutes. So a migraine aura typically affects both eyes. And so something that might be an aura might be blinding lights, shimmering lights, zigzaggy lights, or even a blind spot. Again, that blind spot can be really scary because of course everybody's worried that they've got a brain tumor. So the best thing to do is get checked by your eye doctor because you don't wanna think it's a migraine with an aura and it's actually something else. It can actually even be little strokes. There's blood clots that can cause some of the symptoms that are really similar to an aura. So it's always best if you're experiencing an aura for the first time to just get a full comprehensive dilated examination and a formal visual field test by your eye doctor. And that way you can just make sure and see that everything looks all right. In and of itself, an aura is not dangerous. It's not going to cause any long-term damage. It's not going to make you more likely to have any problems down the road like glaucoma or macular degeneration, none of that. It's temporary and usually goes away on its own when your headaches resolve. Now, some people will actually have a migraine with an aura and they actually don't even have a headache. And that's possible too. Those are typically what's called ophthalmic migraines. So people are surprised to hear that you can have a migraine without actually having any kind of head pain and just having only the visual symptoms. And then the third type is retinal migraines. So retinal migraines, that's actually more serious than a regular migraine. I mentioned before, most of the time migraines are benign in that they're not going to cause you to lose vision. But a retinal migraine is typically unilateral, just in one eye, and it often reflects a more serious condition in your body, whether it's an impending stroke or there's something else going on. That is why it's really, really important to get checked by your eye doctor and get a full dilated examination so they can understand why you've lost vision in that eye. Usually people that have retinal migraines have repeated short bouts of loss of vision or diminished vision, and it just kind of cycles. An aura cannot just be zigzaggy or flashing lights and or blurry vision. It might almost be like you're looking through water. It can just seem like your vision feels off. And they have found in people that have migraines that we are actually much more likely to have issues with sensory processing visual sensory processing. We are more troubled or we have worse floaters or something called visual snow. So if you feel like you've got a ton of floaters and no one else seems bothered by them and they're driving you crazy, it's not in your head. This has actually been shown to affect us migraine sufferers more. And if we pay attention to them, we can see them. So like right now, if I look, 
I can see my floaters here against this bright window. We just learn to tune them down, but we have a heightened sensory overload from all of those things. And that's been shown by neuro-ophthalmologists. That's something I just wanted to address because I know that a lot of people that suffer from floaters, it can be really debilitating. And to feel like it's in your head or that others are coping with it better can be really challenging too. So we just experience it worse. We have this constant visual noise in our background and we don't hear about this that much and it's there. Unfortunately, there's not much that can be done for them. We have to learn to just ignore them and this is actually one of the few times where blue light blocking glasses might be helpful too. And so this is why I wear mine at nighttime. It doesn't really help me with my eye fatigue or eye strain, but I do find that it helps me uh, with my migraines. The good news is that all that visual snow, all that visual disturbance, all those floaters that we are experiencing, it's benign. It is not dangerous. It is, again, not going to cause us to lose our vision down the road or set us up to have any kind of blindness. So that's a big relief. So why do we get eye pain when we have a migraine? For me personally, it is like someone is sticking an ice pick into my eyeball. It hurts so, so much. And that's when lights become overly bright. I need to be in a dim room. I get the nausea, all of that. Well, it stands to reason when you examine the nerve endings and how the nerves are distributed, there's a particular nerve called cranial nerve five. It comes from the, the brain. That's why it's called cranial for crane, uh, brain. And it actually innervates right around the eye, the sensation of the eye. And that nerve travels and it also gives nerve supply and sensory endings to the orbit. So the orbit is the entire kind of bony, muscle, soft tissue structure of the eye, as well as to parts of your brain. So it makes sense that it's all going to be linked. And I typically will have mine on my left side. That is why I'm pointing to this side. Very rarely will I have right-sided migraines. Now triggers. This is something that if you have migraines, you've exhaustively researched the list of triggers. So I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but the same triggers that cause just your regular migraines can cause ocular migraines. And I'm talking migraines with aura or the ophthalmic migraines, not the retinal ones. Things with tryptophan, aged cheese, red wine, alcohol in general, dark chocolate. I know all the good stuff in life food products and additives like MSG. Living in Hawaii, I love all the Asian food that I eat all the time, but sometimes I have to be really cognizant when I go and get my ramen, which I love to make sure that it's not doesn't have any MSG in it. It's very flavorful, of course, but it really does trigger my migraines. Hormone changes, if you're on the pill, pregnancy, going through menopause, all of those things can affect the frequency of your migraines sleep, your lack of sleep, or even sometimes getting too much sleep can trigger it. Stress and anxiety, which is hard because if you have a lot of migraines and I will put out there, I've, I've had, typically I get more than 15 migraines a month. So I've now escalated my treatment to an injectable medication, but it can be really debilitating. And so that in itself can cause people to have anxiety and depression. And then to know that it's a cycle that's being set up is difficult dehydration and other types of environmental factors like certain smells or perfumes can be triggers. Now, one thing I found that was really interesting in doing a deep dive in ocular migraines is the link between migraines and dry eye syndrome. And that's not something that I had come across before, but there is a link there. So they think that it has to do with that same cranial nerve five, that trigeminal nerve that I was mentioning before as to the cause of the eye pain during migraine attacks. That's also very important in triggering your lubrication and your tears. So they've actually found that the corneal nerves are shorter and they branch differently in migraine sufferers like us. And the opposite, that if you treat the dry eyes in people with chronic migraines, that it can really improve both. So that's some food for thought if you do have some dry eyes and you're a chronic migraine sufferer to make sure you see your eye doctor and let them know that you've got migraines because they might be a little bit more aggressive in treating your dry eyes instead of just telling you to use some artificial tears. So that's what an ocular migraine is. It's typically most people are using it that term to refer to a migraine with an aura, which is not in itself dangerous. It can also be used to refer to ophthalmic migraines where you don't even have a headache at all. 
But if you have any of the symptoms of a retinal migraine where it is only in one eye, please, please, please go ahead and see your eye doctor urgently. And I think it's always great as a baseline to have a full comprehensive eye exam. Even if you're just a chronic migraine sufferer, make sure that there is nothing else going on. Treatment wise, there are a host of different things. You can just use over the counter, kind of ibuprofen, Tylenol, and an Excedrin type thing with the caffeine. Though dehydration triggers migraines, caffeine is known to help with the treatment. And then you can escalate to the triptans. Like there's a whole class of them starting with Imitrex all the way up to the newest types of medications like rel packs and um, all sorts of different types of triptans, which are really helpful that you use when you have a migraine attack within the first 30 minutes. There are prophylactic treatments, so treatments that you use on a daily basis to prevent a migraine attack from happening. Those are typically going to be a beta blocker like propanolol or even um, tricyclic antidepressants can be used to treat migraines. And then the last class is one that I have finally, I've gone through all of those medications and I am now in the monoclonal antibody. I now take an injectable monoclonal antibody. It's not any kind of sponsored video, but my life has changed because of it. I don't get 15 migraines a month anymore. So that has been really huge, but there's of course side effects for every different type of medication. And these same medications that treat your headache will treat the aura. And even if you just have an ophthalmic migraine with no headache at all, these medications can also be used to treat that as well. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. As I mentioned, as you could tell, this is a topic that is close to my heart as a migraine sufferer. I get you, I understand, I've been there had them all my life and uh, it can be really debilitating. So I understand, but I hope with some of the newer treatment options that you can get some relief. And I hope that this video at least puts your mind at ease about the visual symptoms and whether or not they are dangerous. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. It's good to see you. Bye-bye.